I suspect that the sight of their warship being towed by a Federation runabout took the heart out of their fight. We're not done with the Cardassians yet. Not with the strategic importance of that wormhole. Well, you've put Bay Jor on the map, Commander. This will shortly become a leading center of commerce and of scientific exploration. And for Starfleet, one of our most important posts. Welcome to the Sloppy Modeler. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning into my channel for the finale of the USS Rio Grande, uh, the NCC 72452 runabout from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Been at this about four weeks, and uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, your comments and your helpful hints and tips and uh, your compliments. They are uh, extremely appreciated and I thank each and every one of you for uh, taking the time to sit through this build log. We're going to go through uh, what it took to uh, finally put uh, the model on top of its base and we're going to go through a little bit of that with uh, showing the regular landing platform and then showing the uh, the base that I built to approximate it. It's now a way, shape, or form a, a duplicate. But I'm going to go through that and see what I can do, uh, show you what I did in order to produce a landing platform on the Deep Space Nine space station with uh, its connectors and the lights that are on there and, uh, uh, and some of the different colors and so forth. So I'll walk through that with you and then uh, we'll go to the reveal of the model itself with uh, showing uh, what we did for lighting and what we did for uh, paint and, and putting it together. So. Hold on to your hats, and we are going to uh, go for the uh, USS Rio Grande finale. Well, hello, and welcome to the Sloppy Modeler reveal of the uh, USS Rio Grande from Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine. This has been uh, about a month-long project for me, and I thought it would take about that long just due to all the taping and painting and retaping and repainting and the lighting and uh, working particularly hard on several aspects of the lighting that we've talked about throughout the build. So I appreciate uh, everyone uh, tuning in for the finale. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, hit the like and uh, share that video if you like it uh, tonight or whenever you're watching this. But uh, this has been about a month long project as I mentioned. And I just want to go through what I did for the base and then uh, show off the lighting and the rest of the, the model uh, at length here. So. Uh, essentially, what I've got is the uh, USS Rio Grande runabout. The base was a uh, purchased uh, just a one of the plaques at uh, Hobby Lobby that fit my dimensions. I think this is a 15 and a half or 15 and a quarter long by eight and a half wide, and it fits just right. And then I took a uh, real thick piece of cardboard white uh, cardboard and it's actually like a artist board uh, it's about maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick and taped off the pattern that you see here and uh, I'll put in a, a, a short piece uh, uh, of what the landing site looks like on Deep Space Nine and I tried to emulate that uh, I couldn't duplicate it of course but I tried to emulate it with uh, some of the lights and some of the things you see like here all right, so what you're looking at here is a screen capture of a uh, kind of a low-res video, but it was the only thing I could pull from Star Trek Deep Space Nine that showed the runabout uh, taking off from its landing platform. So a couple of things you're going to see here in the landing platform. Number one, uh, each corner has got four LED or four lights, four red lights, and they're flashing. Uh, not flashing, they're on during the, uh, the video. And then uh, you've got uh, a cross in the center for a landing uh, area, and then it looks like two service areas for um, that are darker. In addition to that, uh, this sits on one of the rings of the uh, of the space station, and as a result, you've got a lighter color on the outside, a medium gray next, and then the real dark obsidian gray for the cross and the two other pieces. So that's what I had to try to approximate 
for the landing platform uh, for my base uh, for the runabout Rio Grande. So we'll take a look at where we started and then uh, what, uh, what I came up with. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a uh, piece of uh, real thick cardboard. It's probably a sixteenth or three, uh, maybe three sixteenths or uh, an eighth of an inch thick, I think. Probably closer to a sixteenth of an inch thick. And essentially what that is, is it's, uh, I, I took and taped up the pattern. And then you can see here some of the photos where I actually then sprayed dark obsidian inside of the uh, of the two service elevators and then uh, I used uh, the tape to leave a white on top of the um, on top of the landing bay so that your landing pad so that you could see it in the dark uh, and additionally uh, then I taped around the whole thing I sprayed the interior dark dark pieces with obsidian and then I went to a uh, engine gray for the interior and then that wet cement color I'm becoming so fond of for the uh, for the outside ring, uh, just taping it off with different vinyls and then peeling it up, it left it white. Now, one of the things I had to do on that, uh, it's like an artist board kind of thing, is I, I sprayed it with probably two coats of gloss coat clear first before I taped it or did anything with that because I didn't want it uh, to bleed through. So after I had it taped, after I taped it then, uh, I put another coat of clear over the tape so it wouldn't bleed through into that paper and then sprayed uh, the particular colors on top of that and then and then taping as I went. Then I used a uh, base, it was just basically a frame with the saying on the inside of it from Hobby Lobby and peeled that up and then pasted that that white or now the, the base, I pasted that down onto the uh, the board and then drilled through for my holes and uh, essentially what you're going to see in the in the video here shortly are the four lights around the outside and then the four switches that I used and the switch for the momentary switch. So we'll get to the video now and we will see what uh, what we think of uh, the, the finale of the USS Rio Grande runabout. So that was uh, the base putting it together. Of course I've used a, uh, a 6,000 milliamp USB charger and wired that in so this is all self-contained and has the ability to be recharged quite easily uh, and then uh, reused uh, over and over and over again. So let's uh, light it up and see where uh, we're at. So the first set of lights, hey, they came on. So isn't that always exciting? First set of lights are the red lights on the base itself in the landing pad. And uh, that actually uh, was uh, part of the, of, the, of the photo. You'll see that there's a, in the video capture, that was part of the photo screen. The lights that I have lit up here are the four on the base. I have the lighting lit up inside for like the interior. So you can see there, there's the back of the interior here uh, is lit up. And then uh, additionally, what comes on with that are the navigation lights. So there's one there and there. And then uh, the anti-collision, the anti uh, collision lights, uh, the blinkers, and there's three of those on the model itself. So that's with the first uh, switch that comes on. Uh, the next switch that comes on are the orange, um, next switch that comes on are the orange uh, lights or the orange uh, uh, intake lights for the, the impulse engine. So there we go, that's what I'm trying to get out and say. So those are the orange in the front and in the back, uh, you can see there are the, the glowing red impulse engine exhaust and uh, those come on with that particular switch right there. And then the next switch is the lights up here in the sensor dome or torpedo bay or whatever that is and the thrusters. And on the front of the thrusters, and I'm not sure if you can see that. Yep, looks like you can. So in here I've painted over the lights and I used micro crystal clear first, let that dry, and then painted over that micro crystal clear with some red in the center, blue in the bottom, and then yellow across the top. And I really like the look of that. I think it turned out really nice um, from, from that perspective. Now, you'll know that there's a crystal here and four lights here, the Bassard collectors, and the chiller grills are not lit. And that is after doing some research, finding out that the warp impulse crystal runs the warp drive. 
So learning that was something uh, that was something new for me. And so therefore, when I light that up, uh, you can see that the the Bassard collectors, the chiller grill, and now the warp uh, chiller or the warp impulse crystal fires up. And I didn't wire it up where technically you should turn off the wings uh, in flight. And there it is uh, with the sensors up and all the interior lights going with uh, that that uh, that warp at warp drive. So the sensors are on, the impulse crystal are on. I guess I could turn off the thrusters. Um, and if I were more of an electrician, I would. But when you do, that turns off. When you turn off the thrusters, I think that turns off the nav, uh, not the nav, but the impulse. I'm sorry, that turns off this uh, sensor dome here. So we'll turn that back on. Uh, oh, those are the wings. We'll turn that on and that. So right now everything's up except for the impulse engines as, uh, as you're seeing here. Final things I glued on, of course, were these wings with the sensors there. And uh, for the most part, I, I fixed every light leak I could find. So in that regard, those have been turned uh, into just solid gray paint where I needed to, and they are off and running. So um, I think we're in great shape when it comes to uh, putting that together. So let's uh, take a break, and then we'll come back with some more details. All right, so in our break here, I just thought I'd take a quick shot and show you uh, what this looks like when it's uh, entirely lit up uh, from start to finish. And in there, uh, once you turn the lights off, I see I've got uh, uh, a fresh light leak right up here that I didn't see in the dark, so I'll have to work on that a little bit. I don't know if I've got more, probably. That side looks pretty good, but as I was mentioning, that was a challenge with that seam that uh, uh, I've never put a, a model together like that and, and had the ability to work on that uh, paint job and try to touch it up. So I did what I could with the brush, and I'm going to go over it one more time, I think, with the brush. Um, but from the back, uh, you can see that that turned out really nice. There are the uh, thrusters Learn uh, have lit up nice and yellow. Both nav lights look fantastic. The nav lights in the front here look wonderful, and then the Bassard collectors really go to a deep red, uh, and then that orange really looks nice uh, when you're looking at it from head on. And uh, in the dark, this actually looks very, very cool. So it's got enough light from the bottom, and it's got enough light from the orange or from the red lights there that uh, it, it turned out pretty good. So that is uh, just what this looks like in the dark, and we'll come back and show it to you in the light uh, for a few more details. And I think maybe if I work real hard, I'll give you one more view. And that is of that impulse crystal. And the four lights that go with it. So you can see there that that, that turned out really nice. And I hope that that strobe isn't blowing out the camera. But the impulse crystal itself, you can see there, looks really fantastic and uh, in the dark this uh, really shines out as a beacon so we will be back with you with some more details all right so welcome back and uh, a lot of the details that came into this uh, in the long run uh, again things i really wanted to work on this is very diffused it doesn't have the hot spots of the individual leds that go through there one thing that i didn't do uh, that i should have i didn't light block the impulse, or I'm sorry, the anti-collision lights from the bottom, thinking that it wouldn't make a difference. But when those uh, engines are turned off, uh, you can actually maybe tell there's a little bit of blinking in that one. I think it's more pronounced in the other side. Um, yeah, so you can see the blinking in that. So would I do this again? I would, I would definitely light block the anti-collision lights on the inside, and I didn't do that inside the nacelles. So uh, from that standpoint, that's something that, that I would change uh, the next time out. I am thrilled with the way that the front of these have turned out. They're just a really wonderfully diffused orange. And uh, in that regard, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so excited that they're not hot spots from the lights. Might look like it on camera, but in person there's no 
no lights uh, that, that are um, hot spots or a source light uh, uh, in that regard. The uh, other trick that I really worked hard to do was dealing with these sensor, or I'm sorry, dealing with these thruster lights and the nav lights and bringing them up. And I wondered if using the micro crystal clear would bring those to the top and sure enough it has. So uh, from that standpoint, that turned out really well and I really like all the detail that's in here and on the wings. That, and uh, after I had this all put together and fixed all the light leaks, I used um, Model Masters lacquer flat coat. And uh, boy, I am just absolutely ecstatic with the way that that turned out because it brought that, that sheen down without killing some of the gloss. So it doesn't just look like dull plastic. It, it, it looks really nice, in my opinion, with that dull coat when it came on. Again, all the different colors and all of the different lighting uh, came together. You've seen the bottom, so I'm not going to pull that up and, and show it to you again. Uh, but for the most part, I did have a challenge with the decals on the left and the right. You can see that this one runs uphill a little bit. Uh, they just were not sliding for some reason. Even though I had a gloss coat, they would not slide. Maybe it was across all these, all these panel lines, but it was having a tough time uh, moving them. So I got them close, and I didn't want to rip them or tear them, so I left them uh, as is. The top, I don't think you can see that, but the, I've shown it before. That turned out really nice uh, in regards to uh, that center stripe down the center, and it all lines up, and everything is lit. Oh, and then additionally, that is the momentary switch there that changes up the strobe. It changes up the strobe um, circuit. So it's just gone to a blinking on-off at this point. Uh, I hit it again, and this ramps up as you can see, and then ramps down. And one more hit of that, it ramps up, flashes, and then ramps back down. That is a pretty nice effect, I like that. Uh, then the one more, it's, so it's got five different settings. That just goes to solid white, and then back to uh, the double blink rate. And I like the double blink rate probably the most. I think that works out really, really pretty well. So for the most part, I have uh, completed this. It's gonna go on my shelf somewhere, and We'll move on to the next project. Might I just add, I am so appreciative of your comments. Thank you so much for um, putting that, uh, putting them, you know, the encouragement and how nice you think it's looked and coming along so far. That just makes me feel really, uh, uh, really nice. I, I appreciate it greatly. So um, this is the Sloppy Modeler, and this is the Rio Grande Finale. Uh, tune in next time and we'll be starting something else and I'm, I'm a little undecided on what, what's next but it's going to be in the Star Trek family I'm pretty sure unless I might have a little tiny project to fit in for a couple of days. So with that this is the Sloppy Modeler signing off for the Star Trek USS Rio Grande from Deep Space Nine and we hope to see you uh, the next time. And uh, if I could say this one more time please just go out and enjoy building a model or building something because uh, I can't tell you how much fun I had doing this. Uh, it was just absolutely a, a wonderful time, and uh, to see it all come to fruition with these nice switches uh, made, it, uh, made it so worthwhile in the long run. So that is one more revolving look around the USS Rio Grande, and we will see you next time. This is a Sloppy Modeler signing off.